neon lines and hearts. They're really well sold on stock footage websites, so it's about time we learn how to create our own animation such as this one, using only geometry nodes made in such a way such that it loops and can be extrapolated to be as long as you possibly want. With that, let's actually begin learning how to do this. In our default scene, we have to go ahead and first create the heart shape. You can use any method you like to create that shape, but I'll just go ahead and delete the default cube and press Shift A and search for a mesh circle. Then I'll go to this drop down over here and just increase the number of vertices from 32 to something like 128 so that it's a lot smoother. Then I'll press RX90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then I'll press 1 to go into my front view, after which I'll press Tab to go into edit mode, or you can use this drop down over here. And then I'll just select this vertex over here and switch on proportional editing by tapping the letter O or pressing this button up here. After that, I'll change from smooth to sharp and then just press G Z and bring it down. I can use my scroll wheel to decide how much of the actual circle gets influenced, but I'll go with something like this and then I'll select this bottom most vertex and press G Z again, but this time I'll just reduce it so that we get this inverse shape like that. Then I'll press A to select everything and press S X and just scale it up till we have a fairly good heart shape. I feel like this can come down a little bit more, so just press G Z and play around with everything until you're happy with it. So once you're happy with the shape, just press A to select everything and press F to add in a face and this is going to be your heart so let's rename this from circle to heart. Now you can go ahead and start off with your geometry node object so press shift a and search for any primitive you want it doesn't make a difference let's go with a cube and then just bring your cursor to the junction of these two windows and click and drag to create a new window then you can change this from the 3d viewport to the geometry node editor and press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree then you can zoom in select the group input and tap x to delete it after that we can press shift a and search for a mesh circle and plug the mesh into the group output now we want this mesh circle to be present behind the heart and we also want the heart to be a little bit more centralized let's just press gz and move the heart up by a little bit and then select our geometry node object again and then rotate it on the x-axis. To do that you can press shift a and search for a transform geometry node and plug that in after the mesh circle and for the rotation on the x change it to 90. Then for the translation you can move it back on the y by quite a bit so let's say minus 15 meters might be good enough because we are going to be instancing points from this distance and then having them scaled randomly and we want them to always start from behind the heart. So I think this should be good enough but right now there's no face present on this circle so let's change the fill type from none to n gone and now we have a face on which we can distribute a bunch of points we also want this to be a lot larger so let's just change this radius from one to something like five or four meters now we can go ahead and just distribute a bunch of points on this mesh circle by pressing shift a and searching for a distribute points on faces node now we're going to change this from random to poison disk so that we don't have two points at the same place and we can do that by just increasing the distance min till we get something that we're happy with maybe i'll go with a distance min of 0.2 the density max I can change to something like 25 and that should be more than enough number of points. Now we want to delete any of the points that are going to come in contact with this heart. So to do that we can use a raycast node so let's press shift a and search for a raycast. For the target geometry we need to select this heart so let's come to the outliner click and drag the heart into the geometry node workspace and then change this from original to relative and plug the geometry into the target geometry. Now since we have the particles present here and the rays have to come in this direction we can see from this gizmo that this direction is in the positive y axis. So we have to change this ray direction from negative 1 on the z to a value of 1 on the y axis so that it moves in this particular direction. Now if the point is hit then we want to delete it so let's press shift a and search for a delete geometry node and use this is hit option as the selection. So that way we get a heart shaped hole present amongst our points. If we start increasing the density max and reducing the density min you can clearly see how the heart shape is being deleted. So let's bring this back to what it was. So next let's go ahead and start shifting these points on the y-axis to give some randomness to the location of whatever we instance on these points. So let's press shift a and search for a set position node and since we want to offset it only on the y let's press shift a and search for a combined xyz node and then use a random value node that we can plug into the y socket. Now let's change this max distance to something like 5 and then plug this vector into the offset of the set position. Now we can instance either spheres or cylinders onto these particular points. For that we can press shift a and search for an instance on points node and since we want to instance either spheres 
or cylinders, we need two instance on points nodes and we have to join them together. So let's search for a join geometry and let's also duplicate this instance on points node. Plug this geometry into the points and this instance into the join geometry. Now here we're going to be using spheres and here we're going to be using cylinders. So press shift A and search for an icosphere. Let's reduce the radius to 0 0.01 meters and we'll increase the subdivisions to something like two or three. And we need this to be smooth. So let's search for a set shade smooth node and then plug the mesh into the geometry and the geometry into the instance. But this way, every single point gets these icospheres, but I want them only on a few points. For that, we press shift A and search for another random value node. But this time we'll change it from float to Boolean. And now we can just bring this here and plug this value into the selection of this instance on points. That way, 50% of the points get this sphere instance onto it but the other 50% of points just disappear. For that we have to use this instance socket and use cylinders. So press shift A and search for a curve line node and change this from the Z to the Y because we want the cylinders to be on the Y axis. So we change the end to a value of 2 on the Y axis and then press shift A and search for a curve to mesh node. For the actual profile curve we can use a curve circle so press shift A and search for a curve circle and just change this resolution down to something like 16 because we don't need it to be that high resolution and we can reduce the radius to 0 0.01 and plug the curve into the profile curve and this mesh into the instance of the instance on points. Now we have a cylinder on every single one of the points, but we want it to be on the points that do not have the spheres instanced onto them. For that, we can use a Boolean math node and change it from AND to NOT and then plug this random value into the socket and plug this Boolean output as the selection to the instance on points. So now every point has either an icosphere instanced on it or it has this cylinder instanced on it. However, if we actually look at the cylinder, the faces are open. So let's just fill that by going to this curve to mesh node and checking fill caps. Now we can continue to scale this randomly on the y axis by pressing shift A and searching for a random value node as well as a combined XYZ node so that we can use the random value only on the Y axis. And we can change this max value to something like three units and the minimum to something like 0 0.2 units and then plug this value into the Y and plug this combined XYZ into the scale of the instance on points node. Now all of them disappear because our combined XYZ had a value of zero and zero on the X and the Z, but it should be a value of one on both the X and the Z so that they remain cylindrical. Now that we have this set up, if you feel like these cylinders are far too long, you can just just reduce the Y value on the original curve line node and that should change the overall size of all of the cylinders. Once you're happy with the size of everything, you can just place the camera before we start the simulation zone section. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, followed by R Z 180 to rotate it on the Z axis by 180 degrees. Then you can press zero to go into your camera view and just press G Y and then just drag it back till it comes behind our heart after which we can go to the camera properties and reduce the focal length down to something like 25 to give it a much wider field of view maybe a value of 18 will do good then we'll go to the viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one and essentially we don't want any of these lines to be visible during our first frame that would mean that when we actually instance more points or the next set even they will not randomly appear but it'll seem to come from behind the heart so we can go back to our geometry node section and under the transform geometry for the original mesh circle that we had, we can change this Y value back until all the points are completely hidden by our heart. So maybe a value of minus 50 will be good enough. With that, we can start with the actual simulation zone section. So press shift A and search for a simulation zone. Then plug this join geometry into the input of the simulation zone and take the output and plug it into the group output. Now on every frame, we can just move every single one of those spheres and cylinders on the Y axis by pressing shift A and searching for a set position node. Now you can plug this in and just change the offset by 0.1 units and this should happen on every single frame. But before we actually start the simulation, let's just set all of our animation defaults by coming to the output properties panel and changing the frame rate to 60 frames per second and having the end frame as twice the length of what we want. So I want it to loop every 10 seconds, which means 600 frames. So I'm going to make it 1200, which is twice of 600. Similarly, you can just set the output folder and the file format as well as the encoding. I'm going to change it from Matroska to MPEG4 and output quality. I'm going to choose as perceptually lossless. Now, if you were to just play the animation after 
after some number of frames, you should see these lines start appearing from behind our heart. Now the playback is going to be much slower. So this is actually moving at about one third the final speed. But since this is a simulation zone, if you just change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping, it won't be able to simulate perfectly. So you can always go to your physics properties and under the simulation zone, you can just bake it and then play it to see the actual speed. To bake it, you have to save the file. So press control S and save it. Once you've saved it, press bake. So once the simulation is baked, you can just change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping. And when you play the animation, you'll get a realistic idea of the speed at which these particles are actually moving. So right now I can see that they're seeming to move really slow over there, but as they come close, it's actually fast enough. So I'm pretty happy with the speed. If I felt like it was too fast, I'd have to reduce this. And if it was too slow, I'd have to increase this value from 0.1 to something even higher. Since I'm happy with the speed, I'll leave it as is. And now I can start with actually creating more sets of these lines and spheres. So for that, I have to join in a new set of all of these by pressing shift a and searching for a joint geometry node and also to make changes within the simulation zone or before the simulation zone you just have to delete the bake and then you can start changing things around once again so i want to join it in with this joint geometry but this way you'll get a new set every single frame i don't want it to happen every single frame i want it to happen every 100 or 200 frames so let's press shift a and search for a switch node plug it in after the joint geometry and i'm going to choose this as the true and i'll take this geometry without the joint geometry Geometry and plug that into the false. Now I'll press shift a and search for a scene time node and I'll check if the frame number is divisible by 300 only then will a new set of points be created. So I'll press shift a and search for a math node and change it from add to modulo. That way I get the remainder after division so I can plug the frame into the first value and the second value as to the number of frames after which I wanted to add in the new set of points. Maybe instead of 300 I'll go with 100 and that way every 100 frames a new set of points will be created. But I need to compare if this remainder is zero. So I press shift a and search for a compare node and then plug this value into the first socket and then zoom in, select this greater than and change it to equal. So now if this value is equal to zero, then this will give me a true result and we will use the true socket which will join in the geometry. So let's plug this result into the switch. Now we should get a new set of lines and spheres coming in every 100 frames. Always remember that when you're rerunning the simulation, just change the playback from frame dropping to play every frame so that the simulation occurs properly. If you look at it, you can see how we get all of these points coming in and there is a little gap between them, but right now they're the exact same. So the gap is very noticeable. Let's randomize this a lot more and then see what happens. To randomize all of these let's press shift a and search for a scene time node and we'll use this frame value to control the seed for everything that has randomizable properties so all of the random values will be using this frame value but remember we want it to loop every 600 frames so we can't just use the frame value we have to use another math node and switch it to modulo and check for 600 so change this to modulo and keep the second value at 600 and plug this frame into the first socket and then plug this value into the seed for the distribute points on faces node as well as the seed for the random value node on the offset of the set position. Similarly, I also want it to be used for the seed of this random value that scales it on the y axis. But if we currently use the same value, all of the particles that were shifted forward will also be scaled more. I don't want that. I want it to be random. So I'll press shift a and search for a math node and I'll add in a value of something like 100. It can be any random value. Now I'll plug this into the first socket and take this value and plug that into the seed of the random value for the scaling. Then let's go back to frame zero and replay the simulation and see whether this randomization is enough to actually cover up that gap. So it isn't exactly enough to cover up the gap. So instead of adding it in every 100 frames, we'll add it in every 50 frames. So now if we go back to frame zero and play the animation, we can see that we get quite a decent distribution and it looks like it's a continuous stream of particles that are coming in, which is perfectly all right. If we go back to our camera view, we can see what we have. And I think that we're spending quite a lot of time before even the first particle comes into view. So let's reduce this translation from minus 50 to something like minus 30. And I think that should be good enough. Now we can go ahead and bake this simulation in case we're happy with it. But once you bake it, we'll not be making any more changes. So make sure that you're happy with the distribution and everything like that. Once you're happy with it, go ahead and press bake. So once you've baked the animation, you should be able to see it occur. And if you now change the start frame to 601, you should see that on frame 600, as well as frame 1200, you should have the exact same distribution of points. That means it's a perfect seamless loop. So as long as 600 and frame 1200 are the exact same, you have a perfect seamless loop. In case that isn't happening, one thing that I forgot to mention is that when you're adding in a new bunch of points, 
you have to make sure that this value is a sub multiple of whatever modulo value you're using over here. So in this case, we're using a modulo value of 600. So we have to just make sure that this number is a factor of 600. As long as that is true, the animation should be perfectly looping. Another thing that you could note is that if you're finding it too hard for the simulation to occur, you don't require all these points to be present after they cross the camera as well. So what you can do is press shift A and search for a delete geometry node and change this type from point to instance and just delete the instances if their if their Y position is greater than maybe 10 units. So you can press shift A and search for a position node and then you can separate out the XYZ using a separate XYZ node and then you can plug the position into the vector and then compare the Y value with the number. So press shift A and search for a compare node, plug the Y into the first socket and check if it is greater than a value of 10 and then take this result and plug it into the selection. Since I've already baked it and it's working fine for me, I'm not going to delete the bake and rebake it. But in case you're finding issues with even the rendering section and it's becoming too slow for you, definitely use this to reduce the number of polygons present in your scene. With that, we can go ahead and just finish off the geometry node tree and start the shading. So press shift A and search for a set material node, plug it in after the simulation output and just choose the default material itself. And to actually get random colors for different instances as a whole, we can't just use the object info node because it won't be looping. To make it looping, we have to capture a random value here itself. So press shift A and search for a store named attribute. Now we're gonna keep it at float because we'll just take a random value between zero to one, but we want a random value for every instance. Then press shift A and search for a random value node and just plug this value into the value and give this some name, maybe random value such as R A N D V. Then you can switch your viewport shading to rendered, switch off your overlays, select the default light and press delete to delete it. You can also go to your world properties and change the color down all the way to black. Then you can select your geometry node object, go to the material properties and just select the default material and rename this as lines and dots. Then you can switch from your geometry node editor to your shader editor and start messing around with this material. So if you can't see the material, press period on your numpad to centralize the nodes. And the first thing that we'll do is select the principle to be SDF and delete it by pressing X. Then I'll press shift A and search for an emission node and plug the emission into the surface. Then I'll press zero on my numpad to go into my camera view. And to make this much nicer, I'll go to my render properties and switch on bloom, but I'll expand it and change the intensity from 0.05 to 0.02. And I'll also clamp it down to something like four. Then I'll also select screen space reflections to get nice reflections on the heart object. Now to randomize the colors, I'll press shift A and search for an attribute node and just choose R A and D V for the name. And remember we were using it for different instances. So let's change this from geometry to instancer and then press shift A and search for a color ramp node so that we can actually control the different colors. So let's plug this this factor into the factor and press this plus button to create a new stop and just choose three different colors. So let's change this black to maybe a red color. Then we'll change this middle stop to a bright pink color, just like this. Maybe this one can be a darker pink color and maybe I want just a little bit of white. So let's select another stop by either pressing this plus button or control clicking with the node wrangler enabled and then just reducing the saturation all the way down to zero so that we get white. Apart from that, I don't want this to have any gradient. So I'll change this from linear to constant and now it'll either be red or pink or this pink. Otherwise it'll be white. Then let's plug this color into the color of the emission and increase the strength from one to something like 100 so that it's super bright. Then let's select the actual heart, press this plus button to create a new material slot change the name to heart and we'll just increase the metallic value all the way to one and we'll reduce the roughness down to something like 0.2 or 0.1. And if you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope that wasn't too hard for you to follow along. If you liked this one, you can always check out this other neon heart trails tutorial that I've uploaded quite a while ago on this channel. It'll be linked in the description. Beyond that, this technique was very similar to a tutorial that we just did a couple of days ago. So you should definitely check that tutorial out as well if you haven't already. I post videos every single day, so I'm sure there's a lot of content on my channel that's just waiting to be discovered by you. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next video comes out, you can browse through all those different videos and keep creating while staying creative.